Hi, this is Chris Wall at The Wall Network, and today I'm going to do an introduction to the Cisco UCS Platform Emulator. Now, the Platform Emulator is a way that you can basically, on the cheap, play with Cisco UCS Manager without having any UCS hardware at all. You really just need a vSphere lab of some sort or VMware Workstation. And you can go on their website that I have up in front of you, uh, grab a Cisco.com user ID, there's no charge for that log in and you can download the OVA. So it's a pretty easy way to get your hands on UCS Manager without any kind of hardware. Now I'm assuming you've gotten here, you've got your Cisco.com user ID, and you've logged in and downloaded the OVA. The next step once you actually have the OVA is to deploy it into your environment and I've got it set up in my Wool Network home lab which is running uh, vSphere 5.1. So basically the only step I'm skipping here is I've downloaded the OVA Go to deploy OVA template and then answer the questions necessary to deploy the OVA. It's basically, you know, where do you want to put the storage, what networks to hook up to, etc. Nothing difficult. I'm sure you can you can walk your th way through the wizard. And then once you do, you'll have this virtual appliance called the Cisco UCS Platform Emulator. And in my case, it's version 2.11a, which is the UCS version that it's emulating. So go ahead and power it on uh, once you've got it deployed and I'll open the console here and it goes through a little bit of a boot process takes a few minutes and then you'll be at this screen now if you don't have DHCP you won't see a UCS UI uh, address at the top uh, because it will need an IP address mine happens to be 10.0.0.1.10 because I do have DHCP running on the subnet that I put the port group on for this guy so if you don't have DHCP type config for the username and the password and it tells you right in the front screen which is pretty awesome because most of these appliances you have to google what's the name and password or it's something weird they made it really easy it's config and config so <laughs> it's very simple and you would go to view and configure network settings which is option A type in the IP address subnet mask all that good stuff and you're ready to rock and then you can see at the top it says my cluster status is enabled my IP address is 10.0.0.1.10 and all I have to do is navigate to that address with the IP so let's go ahead and do that. So I've got it open on another tab already. And there we go. If you've ever used UCS before, uh, UCS Manager specifically, you'll notice this screen looks pretty familiar. This is the standard UCS Manager login screen. In fact, it has all the fancy little copyrights and stuff right at the bottom and really looks the same. But what you might notice in addition to that, or hopefully you've noticed, is that the left screen is totally weird and different because there is no menu on the left side on a normal UCS Manager screen. And that's because this is how you control uh, the emulator. It's the, As it says at the top, it's the control panel for the emulator. So if you want to dive right into UCS, you could click this button, launch it, and you'd be in UCS. But there's a few housekeeping items that I like to do prior to you know diving right into UCS to make sure that it's the most useful it can be to me. Now, I'll share this UCS Manager page has a ton of things that I don't use for the most part. Like I'm not really going into the, the mob or the a APIs or XML because I don't really care about that stuff. You can do it at your leisure. Uh, more to my benefit is the hardware inventory section. So if I click on that and go to startup inventory, this is basically how you tell the emulator what hardware you want it to pretend to have. So it's your virtual inventory. And it's a pretty straightforward config. Uh, there's tons of icons for everything and you'll, you'll learn those over time but uh, it's basically what do you want for your rack server infrastructure so it comes with two uh, fexes they're actually model 2232 PP emulated fexes along with some rack servers there's a, a C200 and a C210 and then over here is all your blade infrastructure there's a chassis 1 that it comes with I added a chassis 2 uh, and all you need to do to add a chassis, there's a little button right here that says add new chassis. It's kind of hard to find because I kept looking, you know, the plus sign expands stuff, so that's not it. kind of had to find it myself, but there it is, add new chassis. Uh, and when you do, it just basically says, you know, what chassis ID do I want and give it a name. Give it a simple name. I just use, like, chassis 2. You could use chassis 3, that kind of thing. Um, by default, it only has one chassis with six servers in it, six blades. But you can copy it using this little clipboard and make a duplicate of that chassis and swap out the blades for different ones. Or you can make an empty chassis and start populating yourself. The only kind of downside when you make your own chassis, I'll show you real quick. I'll make a chassis 3 just to show you that process. So chassis 3. It's going to put it at the bottom here. Uh, it has. You notice this one has fans and power supplies. There's no fans and power supplies here. 
So if I were to grab some fans for the 5108, which is the model of the chassis, uh, just click and drag it over. It gives you a little picture of it. It's cool. Uh, it wants a slot, so slot one. Enter. And you'd have to do that three times, and the power supply is eight, time, or eight times for the fans and four times for the power supplies. That's no fun. So I typically just copy this one because it already has it done, and then just bounce, you know, basically boot out the servers. So let's show you that real quick. I'm going to delete this one using the trash can. It's gone. There we go. And then we'll just copy this chassis here using the clipboard. I'll do the same thing, chassis 3, right there. And then you've already got all the power supplies and fans ready to rock. You can just boot out these servers, just expand the servers. As you highlight over it, there's a little negative symbol. Just eject it. Poof, it's gone. It actually goes into this kind of like unused area. This is kind of like trash can of what do you have. And you could drag that back in, or you can just delete the stash and get rid of it. So you got a couple choices how you want to do that. That's the way I do it, because I just find it to be easier. And there you go. You can configure all sorts of blades here. Like they have uh, the blade servers here. I'll just drag it up so you can see it a little better. Pardon me for highlighting everything. So you got some lots of more recent stuff here. There's a B200M3. That's a little more recent. All this M1 stuff, you probably don't want to, unless you have some. It's kind of ancient at this point in terms of uh, the blade world. M2 or better is probably what you want to play with. But uh, yeah, there's a B22M3 and a B200M3 that you can play with. And I'll show you for this chassis too. I can just literally grab it. Makes a little fun little picture. Release it. You had a slot number. I'll put it in slot one. And there we go. Let me drag this back down. And there we can see slot one has a B200 with basically no RAM or CPU or anything. It's just kind of an empty blade. You'd have to go here to the CPU and add it. So it's kind of legit. You have to actually build it out like you would a normal blade. Okay, so there's the hardware uh, that you can play with, and it's it's kind of like a video game. It's kind of fun. Emulator settings is another hotspot I'll point out. So you can go in here and you can get an idea, you know, if there's anything goofy with the emulator, you can see maybe something stopped in one of these little emulator uh, jobs. Not too much, too crazy there, but the one thing I'll point out is you can set the number of uplinks that your Fabric Interconnects will have. And that's actually, if you click here for Fabric Interconnect, you can change that. I started with one and moved it to two. You can go all the way up to eight if you want. You can also change what your Fabric Interconnects are. By default, it's the 6248, which is a pretty common fabric interconnect. But you can go down to the older model, 6120, if that's what you have and you want to play with that. Or go up to the larger 6296. It's really up to you what you want to play with. Uh, and then database persistence is another really key one. So by default, it's actually here at reset the database. So if you made a bunch of changes to the UCS Manager config, like maybe you made some VNIC templates and profiles and things like that, and then you rebooted, you're going to lose all that. Uh, and that's kind of by design. This is supposed to be just a throwaway emulator. You can pass it around. Students can play with it. Uh, if you want to keep your design, you want to keep your config, like I do, uh, preserve the UCS database upon restart. So once you do that, you'd submit the change, and then you'd want to restart to have it remember that, and then go forward with making your config changes. Otherwise, when you reboot, you might think, man, where'd all my stuff go? You might have spent an hour playing with the config, and you want it to be back when you get back. So make sure to set that. Otherwise, go to UCS Manager, click on UCS Manager Home, and then launch UCS Manager, and it'll bring up the very standard-looking UCS Manager graphic there. And if you don't have Java, that's when it's going to yell at you. And you can actually log in with the config account if you want. I log in with admin, and password is admin. But I found it really doesn't matter if you use the config config or the admin admin. They both pretty much do the same thing. And it'll log you in. It takes a little bit. And I know it's off your screen a little bit. I'll drag it up. And there you go. You've got uh, all sorts of equipment. Now, I haven't actually restarted since I added that third chassis, so all we see now is an empty chassis that I added before the video and the standard chassis with the, the six servers that it just comes with. But um, you can see that the change that I made of the two-link was was made. So there's there's a few changes that get applied after the reboot, and the rest you got to save your config and, and, and do a restart. Um, so that's it for this video. In the next one, I'll go over some actual features within the emulator and kind of discuss where the emulator stands compared to a physical system. Thank you for watching this video. If you found the information valuable, make sure to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos on my channel, please become a subscriber. For more articles on technical solutions and home lab building, achieving certifications, and so on, head on over to wallnetwork.com. Thank you.